The silence of the past winding through water, bending through air, trembling through earth. What is to come buried in the silence of the moment. I think it stems from the fact that I always had these dreams to deal with <laughs> my whole life. Even as a little child I had these intense dreams and I couldn't cope um, in any other way but to sit down and draw and paint. That's how this whole thing started. I'm not motivated by aesthetics only. I love aesthetics, I love beautiful things, I love harmony, but I try to combine the facts of life, which are, as we all know, are often not harmonious. So I try to show sometimes pain and suffering in a, in a beautiful way, because pain and suffering has a purpose, of course. It's a very difficult piece to deal with because it has to do with a lot of suffering. It has to do with the suffering of tens of thousands of people, actually millions. <laughs> and I'm interested in suffering, particularly in the suffering that is caused by this need that some people seem to have to dominate. I'm interested in understanding the shadow aspect of being human. You know, that, that book that I'm reading there is, is probably the most awful book that, that was ever written, an encyclopedia on how to um, torture people and kill them. I, I want to understand it a little better, why a person could be so cold to inflict so much pain on, on someone else. I try to dig in there, gain some understanding, I think one of my burdens has always been a sense of empathy. I think it's sometimes a little bit exaggerated for me and burdens me and, and painting and sculpting uh, gives me a relief. Some people love trees, some people love other aspects of nature. For me, it's the rocks, mostly the rocks. I seem to identify with them also when I sculpt it. And they speak back and I become them and they become me. And it's a form of meditation. It's, you know, like the mountains are so majestic and, and huge and old, millions of years old. And, and I look at them and they don't say anything and I feel like because they don't say anything, they say everything. Yeah, when I was 16, actually 14, I started to seriously paint with oils and I loved Rembrandt and some of the old masters and I quickly realized um, I would love to be able to paint like them because then I could paint my dreams the way they really look and it's fascinating most of my dreams are uh, Rembrandt lit they have the, the lighting the chiaroscuro is very strong in them most of the time painting is authentic then it'll be modern you know the technique is secondary the technique is not that important mm. to me it's uh, maybe that's not true it, I, I love it it's important to me but it's not it's secondary
drawing is the basis for for all the visual arts you know to, drawing is actually when I paint I draw and when I sculpt I draw it drawing is always an always an aspect of the creative act when you're a visual artist it demands concentration again it's like meditation you can only draw well if you're here right now at this moment so drawing is, is a form of meditation if you really do it as well as you can then you're meditating Creating art has always helped me to bear being alive on this planet, you know? This planet is so gorgeously beautiful and it's also horrific. That's this contrast that fascinates me, at the same time pains me, like so many others. You know, there's a lot of people with a lot of empathy in this world. And I think that if we're lucky and have empathy, we should try to have our say. Because I, th I think oh, too many people who are very empathetic are too silent. It's probably super important not to take ourselves too seriously. But it's also super important to take ourselves serious enough to have our, our say in our own way. <laughs> it seems funny, but for me to have the hammer and the chisel in my hand is maybe the same thing as for a Buddhist monk is sitting there in, in meditation. I feel the time stands still and I'm only in the moment, I'm not anywhere else. I think I'm fortunate because I feel like working with stone makes me a better painter and being a painter makes me a better Sculptor. I think that it started out maybe um, because the old master techniques take so much discipline to work like that. And, then, and I thought that in the sculpture garden, I gave myself a motto, the opposite of form follows function. I thought I'm going to build something function follows form. And so I, I just am building this crazy thing. absolutely no sense why are you doing this and why this form and why this and why is that arch going there and I'm trying to create some kind of order out of chaos and just by letting things happen because we work in a way that where accidents then determine the path that is fascinating mm -hmm. 